Hey, thanks for joining me for this Treasure Hunting Tuesday video again. So this kit here is golden charcoal. And um, the funny thing about this, I, I came across even more treasures with these kits. Uh, if you watched Pumpkin Spice on the last Treasure Hunting Tuesday, I went over a lot of it. I made five kits uh, that day, and this is one of them. So um, the Pumpkin Spice, what I've started doing is I just got this mixed media pad, if you haven't seen that video, and I got this at Hobby Lobby, and it's a uh, five and a half by eight and a half inch, 110 pound mixed media paper. Very inexpensive. I always wait for this to go on sale if you're in the States and you have access or if you have access online, Masters Touch products go on sale around every three weeks, just to let you know. And then I've been using watercolor paper to sandwich everything together. And I've just been using the Canson watercolor nine by 12 and I cut one sheet in half to do these kits here. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and make some bigger kits with these color combinations, but I loved this little paper pad and I really wanted to give it a shot and see how it worked out. And the treasure about this kit, this golden charcoal, here's the colors I used. I use the Rit Charcoal Gray, which this is one of my absolute new favorite colors. And it's not a new color, it's just new to me. <laughs> Sometimes I get a little behind the times. And then I used this Golden Yellow. So, uh, and you know, when I first saw this color combination, there was a few years ago where this color combination was everywhere. They were pushing it in fashion and all over the place, and I couldn't stand it. I thought it was so yucky. And then something clicked over in me, and I started to really become attracted to it. And I don't, you know, that happens to me quite often, I must say. But of course, as you know, my color palettes are jewel tones and earth, earth colors. So um, these are both earthy in their own right. And this might be considered a jewel tone here, but um, the, I am so happy with the results that I got from these two colors together. So of course I invite you to give it a shot. And um, as always, these really need to be shake, shake, shaken up very well before you put them in your water. And I mixed for this kit because this color is pretty dark. So I only mixed about 15% of this bottle into a full little glass of water about that size. Hot water, of course, always hot water so that it mixes right. But these dyes take a lot of colors to make this particular color. So if you just take it off of your shelf and start pouring it without shaking it, you're gonna get wildly different results. And, and I have not been happy when that happens to me. So shake the heck out of your dye before you pour it into your glass, okay? So I did, like I said, about 15% of this, and I did about 40% of this. This color is lighter, and I really wanted the yellow to show up brightly. And when I mixed these two colors, I did this golden charcoal kit. I did another kit called golden teal, which is the golden with teal, and that video will be coming out soon. And then I did another kit that I am calling forest mists. And that one is these two colors plus the teal, all three of them together. So I made a big batch of the golden yellow because I was making that many kits. But you always want to mix your lighter colors more concentrated to get that intensity, okay? I hope that makes sense. So anyway, let's go over this. Now here are the watercolor sheets. And if you watch the pumpkin spice, you saw me talk about this border and how much I like it. This is a result of putting these pages, sandwiching them together, 
like so. And then this dark border is sticking out in the pan when I'm cooking them and that's how that ends up happening. Now with this kit, I put golden, I put what was left over of my golden yellow mix in the bath when I cooked these pages. And at this sheet right here, is absolutely one of my favorites. And I have noticed with the gray dyes and the blue dyes that I will on occasion get some purple, just little hints of purple here and there when I use those colors because, you know, they're formulated for um, fabric. They are not formulated for paper. So you get these wild, cool results. So here's this side of this watercolor sheet. And then of course, here's the gray marks and this is why if this is your first time watching my channel I hate to say this every time for those of you that come back again and again and thank you for that by the way but I use the thick watercolor paper because I tie my eco dyes together in grates and this Watercolor paper protects the rest of the kit from the great marks coming through and showing on the other pages. So I guess I'm just going to need to say it every time. <laughs> I really don't know how to get around it. I don't want to sound like a broken record, but at the same time, if I don't say it, I get questions. So here's this other. I do invite you to watch my eco dye playlist. There is tons of info on it. I did this really big grapevine leaf and then, oh, I just love that. I think that is such a cool graphic element. And then of course you don't get it on this side because this is the outside page of the kit. And then of course I sandwich leaves between the grate and the watercolor paper. So that has become my standard system. To, and, and it doesn't matter if I'm using these five and a half by eight and a half, if I'm using eight and a half by 11 full sheet, or if I'm using eight and a half by 11 mixed media paper that's folded in half, it's all the same for me now. I have no printer paper in my eco die kits and I sandwich all of my eco die kits in watercolor paper now as a rule okay i have just found that that works best so now here's the mixed media paper and this may have been the mirror image of maybe not it looks a little different but you will end up with your mirror images in the kit somewhere because you can't not. Now the only ones that you won't have a mirror image to are your outside, of course, of course. So here's this beautiful, oh, isn't that gray gold combination just, I just find it astoundingly beautiful. <laughs> I really do. And I got wild results out of this. Um, like this weird, it, it, it's really neat. Far away, it doesn't look that great. But just the detail in the leaf, it's, it's really amazing. And then, like I said, look at all these hints of purple in here. That is from the gray, and it could be from it settling in the cup, like I was saying. And then here's a lighter page. I tend to get silhouette prints with the backs of the leaves. The vein side for me, I have found that I get the best results, but I like to sandwich everything together. So I just get what I get. So here's this maple, little sprig of maple leaves here. I love this color combo and I really want to make big like I was saying in the pumpkin spice you know I had it in my head to make some mini journals out of these and just fold them in half and not cut them or anything and I think that's really beautiful right there you know to make these beautiful botanical journal pages but I definitely want to make full size eight and a half by 11 of these color combos because I really like how they came out. This was kind of a, I rushed through these kits. That's another thing I wanted to tell you. The three that I did that were similar color combinations of the charcoal gray, the golden yellow, and the teal, there's no teal in this kit, but I made all three of those kits together and I, 
tied them all separately. They all had their separate grates, but I stacked them in the pan. I put rocks on them and I cooked all three kits together, which I've never done before, but I was in a hurry and I, wa and I thought, you know, it's worth it to try because if I can do that moving forward, that really is gonna work great for me because then I can get a bunch more kits cooked all at once. So that's what I did and that's what you can do. Now, if you're doing the pumpkin spice like this bright orange, you definitely don't wanna stack. You wanna stick with your same color family, of course, you know what I'm saying. So there's those. Oh, it's just crazy, the purple that showed up. Just wherever, magically. Here's another sprig of those. Oh, I just love it. And some of these, they turn black. You just never know, you never know. <laughs> these almost look like a stamp and they're real leaves. This is not, there is no stamping in here at this time. <laughs> These are just straight out of the bath. Really pretty. I'm not sure what went on here. I think that this twig was quite thick and it made the paper separate and the dye pooled. So I say I'm not sure, but I actually know exactly what happened here and that's what happened. So if your stuff is too three dimensional, you can get not so great results. So that's why you want to flatten your quills and stuff like that with some pliers. Here's a feather. I put a lot of feathers in these five kits just to have some fun and play around and see how they did. I'm wondering. Okay, so let me pull you back a little. So here is the mirror image. See, this leaf is this leaf, and then this leaf is this one, and then there's the feather. So you get mirror images all the way through your kit. So fun. But look at the difference in color with this paper. Now, I actually love the watercolor results better on this particular page than I do on this one. It's just really, really weird how different papers can give you such different results. Okay, there's that. These are these fun little tree sprig. They're these branches that come and, you know, it's just a long sprig and it comes in with all these little tiny leaves on it. I like to keep it close up so you can see the details. These, I've always had excellent results with these kind of leaves and I don't know what they are. They give great color, they give great detail, they give great definition, they give great balance, they give great composition. There, I can't say anything bad about these leaves at all. So there you go. And then here's the mirror image of this sheet here. So that just pulled in there and see the difference. See if I can get these right. Okay, there you go. There's the difference from, this is the main side and this is the um, top side of the leaf and you get so much more detail with the main side, but you get such beautiful, incredible silhouettes with the top side. So to me, it's always a win-win to do the whole thing, to get both sides printed. So there's that one, a real mix, mod podge of, hodgepodge of leaves. And then there's the mirror image of that one we were just looking at. So um, if you like charcoal gray and gold together, you can really pull it off beautifully. I am here to tell you. So look forward to these colors of these kits because I am absolutely going to do full size and I'm going to do it very soon because I have a bunch of leaves and they've got to be used. So thank you so much for stopping by yet again and for listening to all the fun tips and details and uh, my chatter boxy chattering today. I've had so much fun sitting and chatting with you. 
to ya. <laughs> and I'm really excited to make some journals out of them too. So if you haven't subscribed yet, click the subscribe button so I can bring you along on all these fun treasure hunts. And please click the like button for me. It helps me so much. And I'm really glad you stopped by and I will see you next time. Have a great day. Thank you.